Them Farrell brothers said quarter to three. I'm wondering if we're early or late. Ah, uh, we're late. The bank's closed. Won't be able to get that cashier's check today. Well, now, you worry about the unimportant stuff. I'm just wondering how long it'll take us to get across the street to that saloon. Stop worrying about the saloon. That'll be open till midnight or later. Yeah, but, Joe, on a hot day like this, they might run out of cold beer. Hey, Mike. Josh, how you doing? Joe. Dude, how are you? Sorry we're late. Hey, we weren't waiting. We just got here, but the bank's already closed. Well, we're not going to let that stand for you, are we? We got the money for the herd right here. Well, what good's the money going to do if we got no bank? You want to turn it into a cashier's check, so let's go get one. Just like that, eh? Why not? Not enough business with this bank to rate a couple of favors. This is Mike Farrell. Open up. Sorry, the bank's closed. I'm Mike Farrell. This is Joe Cartwright. And he wants to trade $15,000 for a cashier's check. He's in a hurry, and so am I, so open this door. Must be new. I've never seen you before. Well, not exactly new. I've been here a month. But I do know you. Uh, I wouldn't have opened the door except that Mr. Moore, our president, pointed you out on the street yesterday. Good. Let's get on with it. Uh, it's uh, highly irregular. I'm not uh, I'm not sure Mr. Moore would approve. He'll approve or I'll take my business elsewhere. Besides, there's nothing irregular about a cash deal. Mine right here. Well, I guess it'll be all right. $15,120. And please make out a cashier's check to Joe Cartwright. Well, my tally makes you hurt. It hit over 1000 Joe. Yeah, we would have been 10 over. We lost two crossing the creek. Well, most herds are a few heads short. Pleasure to pay for the extra steers. Pleasure to take the extra money. You, uh, you got a receipt book around here somewhere? Uh, yes, sir. I had it around here. Here, left Oh, there it is, sir. Thank you. Joe, the next time you're up in the Arizona Territory, you stop in and see us. Here? Just ask anybody where the Acabo is, and they'll tell you where to find it. All right, I'll do it. Yeah, it's a great spread, the Acabo. Good hunting, man. Come and plan to spend a week. I'd love to if my father ever gives me a week off. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> here you are, Mr. Carter. All right, thank you. Here's yours. Thank you. Hey, listen, thank you very much. Sorry we kept you so late. Keep much of a watch around here. Anybody can walk right in. I saw you coming. Well, everything went like we planned it. Not quite. What happened to that cashier? Oh. <sighs> you hit him too hard. I only tapped him. I swear he had a head made of eggshells. Where's the money? Well, let's get something straight first. There's a rope in this now. The price has gone up. I want a bigger cut. How much? 
down the middle half. Whew. Tell you what. You make it a third and I won't give you an argument. And you can count out your share right here and now. No tricks? I'm your friend, remember? I found you and your wife down in Mexico. No money, no food, holes in your boots, and wanted by the law. And I've been taking very good care of you ever since. Sure you have. Because you needed a man who knew banks. We needed each other. Now get the money and count it out. Jackson... How many banks have you peeled to get money to invest in high living and uh, racehorses that stop to graze? Two, three? What's the difference? No difference. It's just that you're going to ride back to get Lisa and head right for the border again. And that's a mistake. Because you're going to wind up broke and hungry just like you did before. Now you're really better off at the ranch. And Lisa loves it there. She'll like Mexico City much better. Green paper's gonna put us right back on top again. Some of those blankets on the bed and wrap them up good. Put them on his horse and dump them in the rocks in one of the canyons on the way south of here. What do we do with his horse? Turn him loose, the first Indian sign we see. They'll steal him. I wouldn't have thought of that. That's the difference between you and me. Calamitous, I know. But there's so much money involved, I wanted to come and tell you about it personally. I've been sick, truly sick about this. Well, now, look, my, my $15,000 was given to a teller in your bank. Now, dude saw it, and so did the Farrell brothers. I'm sure they did, but unfortunately, the man who took your money and made out that check was an imposter. Now, this bears the genuine signature of our cashier. If you compare it with the one on the forgery... Yeah, they're completely different, all right. So how do I get my money? I'm deeply sorry, but we can't honor a forged check. Wait a minute. You've got a sheriff in Dryer Wells. What's he doing about this? Trying to find the imposter. Without success up until the time I left. Oh, we suffered a loss, too. Our cashier was clubbed over the head and died later. Well, it's my turn to say I'm sorry. I'll keep these. I might need them. Dude, saddle the horses. Where are you going? After the money. Well, I'm going with you. Oh, no, you're not. Well, I left you in charge of the ranch while he's in San Francisco. It was my job to deliver and sell those cattle. I lost the 15000 I'll get it back. How about if I go along? I've never been to Dry Wells. Well, now's your chance. Be back as soon as we can, brother. Okay, dog, brother. How about these candy? Or you might as well stick around for supper. Well, thank you. That's very nice. to talk to you anyway. In the house, out of the sun, where it's cool. 
I don't mind the sun. I do. I'm buying for rations, huh? Good. How's the kitchen help treating you? Just fine, thank you, Mr. Farrell. Well, you're way too formal. Let's make it Mike and Lisa, shall we? Pedro! Get in here! Pedro! Scraps! Throw them out! And if you ever give Senora Jackson anything like that again, I'll slice off your ears and roast them and throw them to the dogs. It's not his fault. He gave me what I asked for. You put steaks in there. Thick, juicy, tender steaks. I want corn. I want potatoes. I want fresh bread and fresh butter. Si, patron. And two of the best bottles of wine I've got. Bueno. You've got to yell at them or they don't do anything. Speaking of wine, what's your pleasure? Nothing, thank you. Lisa, it's not right for you to be living out there in that adobe shack doing all your own work. I let you do it. Because it's what your husband wanted. It was wrong when he was here, and it's worse now. To better days. Lisa, in this part of the world, the quality lives in the big house. The hacienda. Shacks are for servants. This place is full of spare rooms. Pick anyone you want. Anyone. No, Mr. Farrell, I'm afraid my husband would never approve. Kelly! Open up the gate! Hey, Lisa? To what do we owe the honor of this visit? I heard your horse. I hoped it was my husband riding in. Has my brother been bothering you? He is persistent. I'll take care of it. Thank you. Made a quick trip. Maybe even a little quicker than you expected. $2,500. Last of the cart ride heard. Quartermaster Fort James satisfied? Why shouldn't he be? There's no better beef than Cartwright beef. It'll be none better than Farrell beef. Now that we got the money to operate the way we should. A little trick at the bank with dry wells, we'd put us right back on top again. We haven't heard the last of that. Don't you think I know that? All I bought was time. Time to get rid of the herd. Cartwrights will be coming over the mountain. And their boots I do the same thing. When they get here, what then? What can they prove? We bought a herd and we paid cash for it. We don't know any more about what happened after that than they do. Oh, I'm not going to believe that. We're going to have to fight them. All right. We'll fight. We've got the men. What do you mean we got the men? we got three guns we can depend on. Mine, yours, and Keldy's. Well, hire more. There's something else on your mind. Let's have it. Yeah. Something else. I know that that thing in Dry Wells was just an excuse to get the Jacksons out of Mexico. I watched you work for a lot of years, Mike. Abner Jackson didn't know it, but he was dead from the minute you saw Lisa. You want Lisa, but she doesn't want you, and that's the way it's going to be. Don't you mouth off at me, boy. You're talking to the man. Changed your pants, cleaned your messes, wiped your nose, and paid your bills ever since you were paid born. my bills. You were the one that couldn't cut loose from the poker tables till you were in so deep we had to mortgage the ranch. My ranch. I built it. Our ranch. Pa left it to both of us. Get out of here. How many fights we had, Mike? A hundred? Two hundred? And you won them all, except the last one. I could have broken you over my knee if I wanted to. Not then or now, and don't ever try. Stay away from Lisa. Stay clear away, or we're going to tangle. 
And that'll be the second and last fight you'll lose. Billy Blake was right in here under this table all the time you and the Farrells was in the bank. Well, Billy was getting on. He, uh, he didn't see too good, didn't hear too good. I guess that's how come somebody could hide in here until he pulled the blinds, locked the door. Yeah, no suspects, huh? We didn't even know what the man looked like until we got your telegraph. But we tried anyway, as hard as we know how. You see, Billy was a cousin of my wife's. Four days before she let me stay in the house long enough to eat a meal. Well, there's nothing more to see in here. Aside from my 15000 did the bank lose any money? No, the vault was locked. You know, Mr. Cartwright, the description of that cashier you sent, it, well, it seems to fit a man who was around here for two or three days before the bank was robbed. He's plumb gone since. This whole thing was well planned. Yeah, had to. Bank was closed, vault was locked. That fake cashier didn't stand to make a cent unless he knew that you and the Farrells and the money was going to walk into this bank. Yeah. You think he pulled it off alone? I don't know. We're not going to know until we catch him. You just want to walk down to jail with me? I got some coffee. Sounds good. Boys, well, it ain't fresh, but. I found him hid under some rocks in a stud canyon off Apache Flats. Got one bullet through the heart. It's the phony cashier. I found this in one of his pockets, and that's all I found on him. You know her? Nobody I ever saw. I've seen everybody around here within two days' ride. Well, in my opinion, we just slammed into the end of the box canyon. Take him down to docks. That dead man ain't gonna help us none. Looks to me like he wasn't in this alone. There's only two other people who knew we were bringing $15,000 to that bank. The Farrell brothers. They did kind of open that bank easy like, didn't they? What do you know about them, Sheriff? No, oh, not very much. Except that they're long gone into Arizona territory by now. Cattle sold, the money stashed, and out of my reach. Who's the law down there? Well, there's a territorial marshal rides by the Acabo about once every six months. Outside of that, I... Farrell's are pretty much about all the law there is. Mind if I keep this? Nope. Let's go see the Farrell brothers. From what I hear, they got a real fort down there. They hire a lot of border gun hands. You'd do a sight better sticking your head in a rattler's nest. Yeah, maybe so, but there's no other way to get to them. Come on, let's ride. Just how far is this Farrell Ranch? Oh, I figured the Cabo ought to be about another day's ride. The Cabo. You know, that's a name I've been hearing ever since I was a kid. Uh, Cabo, it's Spanish. Means I finish. Yeah, well, I hope it isn't our finish. Well, you're full of witty sands and optimism. That's what I like about you, dude. By the way, uh, how are we going to get in the feral place? I'm going to ride up and ride in. Oh, yeah, just like three fat little quail flying straight into the barrels of a shotgun. Straight forward, that's you, Joe. Not me, I'm a little more... Uh... Sneaky. But devious is a word I had in mind, but sneaky will do fine. I read a story once about a big fort. There were some soldiers trying to get in. So they built a big wooden horse and they took it up to the gate and left it. Yeah, it's a Trojan horse, so on. Trojan horse, yeah. You get past bays and duns and I'm lost. 
the people opened the gate and dragged the horse inside. There were men inside the horse. When the soldiers got back, they had the gate open and the battle half won. Now, it occurs to me the two of us would be a lot better off if one of us was inside the fort when the other two rode up. Are you volunteering? Well, there's got to be somebody the fellows don't know. It seems to come down to me. <laughs> Candy, you are sneaky. You know, if the fighting starts, it'll be uh, you and me that's getting shot at, Joe. And I'll be the one man who ain't shooting at you. He thinks of everything, don't he? You know, how do you figure on getting inside? I think I'll get me some boards and build me a horse. what you think, mister. You don't get in here until you tell me what you want. What's going on out there? Some saddle tramp wants to see the boss. Well, boss. All right, open the gate, let him in. All right, you're in. Now, what do you want? Work. I'm a top hand. You any good with that gun? Try me. Find out. Well, he comes right at you, doesn't he? I like that. And we can use another hand. Can't use you, mister. Kelly, get him out of here. You heard the man. Move! Hurry up! Out! Take him, Kelly. Tell your hired hand to get out of that gun belt without touching the gun. Do what he says, Kelly. It's the kind of man you hire. He looks like a short measure of nothing to me. You better get out of those gun belts. I'll show you. That won't be necessary. I guarantee you, no gun play. He took our best hand apart without even working up a sweat. We need him. Maybe. Where are you from? Different places. What places? Virginia City, Gold Hill, Carson, Tonopah, Dry Wells, all over. All right. I want ten dollars more a month than he's getting. Uh, 
you're worth it. You're hired, friend. Thank you kindly. This is Lisa Jackson. Something I do for you? I heard you say you were from the north. Dry wells. Yeah, that's one of the places I stopped at, yeah. My husband is up there. On business. I wondered if you might have seen him. Jackson? No, I don't think I met anybody with that name. He's dark. Curly hair, hazel eyes, mustache. Well. Lisa, I see you've met her new hand. We were just talking about dry wells. She was asking me about her husband. Ma'am, I'm sorry. I didn't meet anybody with that name. But I was just in there long enough to say howdy and goodbye. Yes. Well, thanks anyway. Pretty woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You came in from up Reno way. Mm -hmm. How long were you on the trail? Three, four weeks. Moved right along, huh? I don't stay where I don't like what I see. No offense. I wasn't trying to pry. It's just that outside news is scarcer around here than dancing girls. And I thought something might have happened along the way. No, nothing. Well, there was a bank robbery in Dry Wells. Uh, something different about it. I never did get the straight of that. I guess you know there's more to your job than just guarding that gate. Gun hand pay, there usually is. Well, Mrs. Jackson is the worrying kind. That robbery had nothing to do with her husband. No point in telling her about it. I wasn't planning to. Good. But she lives in an adobe out back. And she asked me to see nobody bothers her while her husband's gone. If I'm not around, that's part of your job. Mm -hmm. Keep everybody away from there, including my brother. Well, that might not sit too good, a hired hand chasing the boss. The boss? I hired you. I didn't say anything about chasing. You just walk up and stand there till he leaves. Kelly! Over here. If Mike wants to know why you're there, just tell him to ask me. All right, we'll do. All right, take over here. Candy's going to get something to eat. That's what I was going to do. Look, you've already hit the kitchen twice. This time, Candy's first. Digging right in, ain't you? Making yourself a home? I'm doing what I'm told, just like you. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you something. You're shining up to the wrong fella. Josh is just the pup. Mike runs this spread. And something else. You and me, we ain't through yet. We got one to go. Well, you try it. You might get yourself a raise. <laughs> when I'm ready. And you may as well give that saddle of yours away, because you sure ain't going to be needing it. Good evening, Lisa. It's pleasant out here, isn't it? Yes, it is, Mr. Farrell. Still Mr. Farrell, huh? Lisa, I I don't want to hurt you, but I've I've got to tell you the truth. I, I don't think you're ever going to see your husband again. On, on, on that ride up north, why, he talked about... He talked about California and a, and a fresh start. I didn't mention it before because... Well, I just, I just couldn't find the right words. But, Lisa, he's, he's not coming back. He just, just rode on west. 
I don't believe you. Wait, I know how hard it is to accept because of the way you feel about him. But it's true. I even lied about the mail for the same reason. The mail from the North comes twice a week, not once every two weeks, like I said. I've had four letters from Drywell since we got back. Good night, Mr. Farrell. Wait, Lisa. There's something else. You don't have to worry. Because I'm going to see to it that you don't want for anything ever. Not for the rest of your life. And I'll be proud to do it, Lisa. I don't want anything from you, Mr. Farrell. All right. I spoke too soon. Think about it, Lisa. I'd break my back to make you happy. Miss Jackson? Fresh water. Who told you to fetch anything? I asked him to, Mr. Farrell. Thank you very much, Candy. Mm -hmm. Take a lot on yourself, boy. After this... After I'll... this! Candy will do Lisa's chores. She likes it better that way. And so do I. I got a tramp in there all dusty and sweating. I guess it's time old bone bag and me did our little trick. Ooh, son. This rock don't have to be big enough to hurt him. Come on, son. Just so he knows it's there. Hey, now look at that. Convince anybody. I trained him myself. Because when that weather turns nasty, there's no better excuse for toasting your feet on someone's bunkhouse stove than a horse that comes up all uh, cripple-like, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I, I know what you mean. I seem to remember the first time you came to our ranch. Well, I've done it again, bone bag. I swear I'm going to have to have my mouth sewed shut. Another mile of dusty road and tight boots, and I bet he's going to make me walk every step of the way. Dude, you can count on it. Fred, how about opening up? Let us in, huh? Eh? Well, you tell me who you are and what you want. Well, now, you're going to stand there spouting questions while a couple pilgrims die of thirst? Who is it? It's Joe Cartwright. Open the gate and let him in. Josh, look who's here. Joe, how are you? Hi, Mike. Do you remember, Good. dude, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you bet, how dude. You? Come right in. You got a lame horse. Yeah. Where'd you made him? Barely. Joe uh, is Candy, one of my men. Uh, he'll take care of your horses for you. Honey. Candy? Mm -hmm. Come on, you gotta be kidding. Nobody's got a name like Candy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in the house. I got something to cut the dust out of your throat. Take that my sounds horse, good. Candy. Yeah, Joe, the Acaba's a great little spread. Of course, it's Pistolero country down here, you know. Border gangs strike without warning. Steal everything but your bones. That's why the fences and the guards outside. Gotta be very careful in the hills, but the hunting's great. I bragged Cartwright right about our hunting, brother Josh. Now it looks like we've got to prove it. Gentlemen, here's to a strong drink, a hot bath, and a soft bed. Just what a man needs after a long ride. Joe, dude. Mike, the, uh, the hospitality is great, but this isn't a pleasure trip. Oh? Well, I don't understand. Well, that $15,000 cashier's check I got at the bank, that's a forgery. It's no good. The bank won't honor it. A forgery? But how could that be? We, we both stood there and watched him make it out. 
Yeah, but the man was an imposter. A real cashier was hit on the head. Died before he regained consciousness. Well, I don't believe it. Josh? Well, if you say it's true, it's true, but I... I can't see how... I didn't know that man. He said I'd been pointed out to him. I'd never seen him before. That's why he let us in the door. I, I'd love to help you, Joe, but you saw and heard what I saw and heard. Josh, can you add anything to that? No, except uh, another drink might ease the pain a little. Yeah, it's a good idea. Joe, I, I don't know what to say. I thought I made a clean deal. Bought a herd, paid cash, and got a receipt. And I bought a phony $15,000 cashier's check. Well, you don't expect me to pay for the herd twice, do you, Joe? No, I don't expect you to pay twice. I, uh, I just thought you might be able to help me find him. Well, I told you I've, I've never seen him before. Yeah, that's right. You told me, didn't you? Why? There must be somebody in Drywells knows that man. If it was me, I'd, I'd talk to every man, woman, and kid in that town. We already have. No luck. Well, it's, uh, it's going to be two or three days before dude's horse is ready to travel. I hope that invitation to be your house guest still holds. Sure, sure it does. If dude wants to make a swap way, he can have his choice of our stock. No, thanks. Me and old Bonebag been through a lot together. I'll keep him. Speaking of old Bonebags, we better check on him. Thanks for the drink. We'll see you around. Hmm? Right. Right. How's the leg? Good, good. You doing any good? This is what I expected, nothing. This woman out back, waiting for her husband to come back from dry wells. He's long overdue. Her picture's in that locket you're carrying. Uh, how long do you think it'll take to heal? Well, I don't know. Two or three days, anyway. Go out past the bunkhouse circle, come in the back. I'll cover. Some box stalls in the barn. I'll get some medicine for this leg. All right, thank you very much. On our wedding day, he said he'd carry this as long as he lived. I knew he was dead. I wouldn't believe it. But I knew. We were very close. Even when we had to be apart. He was with me. Inside. A gentle, glowing warmth. Always there. One night, I woke up. Suddenly, cold and empty and alone. There was nothing there. Nothing at all. And I knew. He made mistakes. He got into trouble trying to get money to buy me the things he thought I wanted. And all I ever wanted was him. Miss Jackson's woodpile was down to nothing. Uh, your brother asked me to rack up enough for a week or two. My husband was working for them. He stole your money for them. And they killed him. And they're going to pay for it, Mrs. Jackson, right now. Mr. Cartwright, I believe I can help you. 
I think you better stay out of it. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm already dead. I died with my husband. Took you long enough. Wait a minute. Stay here and watch the gate till I tell you different. You want me to do what? I want you to open your safe so I can have a look inside. You think your money's in there? Yeah. Yeah, I think you planned this whole thing right from the start. There's money in there, but it's my money. And that doesn't mean we had anything to do with the robbery. The cashier spilled some ink on some of that money. I think it's in your safe. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever been called a thief. This is, uh, this is De La Frontera brandy from Spain. Last bottle in the territory. Why don't we open it up, have a drink, and start all over again? I think we ought to open the safe. Well, if you put it that way. Fuck shot load. Go ahead and try it. No guts. You could have bluffed him. Too late for bluffing. It is now. What are we going to do? Royo Seiko. And they find him and look like a couple of fools got caught in a flash flood. And what about me, Mr. Farrell? Now that I know all about it, are you going to drop me off a cliff, too? He's not going to do anything to you, Lisa. I won't let him. You'd try, Josh. But you couldn't stop him. I can stop him. Did you try at Dry Wells? Mr. Cartwright and I had a long talk. He told me what happened at Drywell's. He even brought me this. You killed my husband. That's right. And I'm sorry you found out about that. Because now you're gonna have to go along with Joe and Dude. Oh, no, you don't. You stay out of this. I told you to stay away from Lisa or we tangle. And I told you you're talking to the man.
It's your money, sure enough. Yeah, $15,000 of them. Give the rest of it to Sheriff and Dry Wells along with Candy's friend. He can turn it over to the U.S. Marshal. When you are ready, senores, the horses wait. Right away, amigo. You know something? What? I wish I'd never seen this money. Our new teacher, Billy. He look kind of natural, don't he? Mm hmm. What are you two wondering? Well, uh, me and Billy, uh, we were thinking about how Miss Pettigrew always wanted us to come to school. We thought we'd come over and enroll. You two want to enroll? Sure. Why not? We as good as anybody, ain't we? Don't sit on the desk. You want to go to school? Take a seat. Uh, any place in particular? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, right up front where I can keep an eye on you. Right here. Anything you say, Joe. And from now on, the name is Mr. Cartwright. Oh, M Mr. Cartwright. Mm -hmm. you, you hear that, Mr. McNabb? I mean, from, from now on, Joe ain't Joe. Joe is Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Cartwright. Take off your hat. Yes, sir, Mr. Cartwright. Show some respect. Kathy? Kathy? What's the matter with her? She's scared, Mr. Cartwright. Scared of what? She never had a man teacher before. Kathy? Hey, Kathy, honey, you're not scared of me, are you? Oh, now, how can that be? Why, after all the times I've taken you on rides and you went over to your house to see your pa? You can't be afraid of me. Let me see a little bit of a smile. Okay, that's better. Hey, all you... All you kids. No, I accidentally made Miss Pettigrew hurt her leg, so I'm gonna have to be your teacher for a little while. I don't know too much about being a teacher, so it's gonna be up to you to help me. Now, will you help me? Yeah, yeah. Sir. Okay, good. Now, how about you show me where you sit, huh? Where's your seat, Kathy? Over there. There you go, honey. Um, my desk's over there, Mr. Cartwright. Go sit down, Mary. All right, erase it, Willie. Why me, Joe? 
The name's Mr. Cartwright. I said erase it. If you say so. Let's go erase it, Billy. Here, Willie. Not you, Billy. You. You know, uh, you really shouldn't get all fretted up, Mr. Cartwright. My pa, he always says, uh, man, get fretted up. He's just going to wear himself out. That's right. Man getting fretted so early in the morning, Mr. Cartwright. Going to be plumb turkey out before the day's over. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think we had enough school for one day, don't you, Billy? Yeah. See you tomorrow, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> And then Chicken Little said that... Uh, uh, then Chicken Little said, the sky is falling. Yeah, yes, Kathy? That's not the way Miss Pettigrew said it. She did it with different animal sounds. Well, that, that, that was Miss Pettigrew. You don't expect me to do it that way, do you? Yeah. 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 Yes, you do. Well, all right, I'll, I'll try. And then Chicken Little said, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. I must go and tell the king. <laughs> Children, I, I think I'll find another story to read, all right? I got a much better one for you. Chicken Little? Chicken Little? The sky is falling. Oh, the sky is falling on my head. Oh, mercy. <laughs> oh, you stay right here. I'm gonna go tell the king. <laughs> hey, get back inside. Quick, quick. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. <laughs> Where you boys been? I ain't seen you since sunup. We've been talking about school, Paul. You know, Joe Cartwright, he's uh, taking over from Miss Pettigrew now that she's uh, laid up. And we've just kind of been pestering him. Miss, uh, Miss Pettigrew. She ain't got you boys hankering to go to school, has she? <laughs> Us, Paul? What do we do at school? Well, there's them that values it. It looks to me like we got everything right here we're ever going to need. That's right, Pa. Well, get out and get your chores done. It's getting late. Right, Pa. Right. Hey, Joe. Joe, you hear the news? Huh? Chicken Little just came by. The uh, sky falls off till next Thursday. Hmm. <laughs> Abby. Yeah, you met my friend, Chicken Little? <laughs> what was that all about? Oh, nothing. He thinks he's funny. How did your first day go? Many problems? Well, the McNabb boy showed up, if you consider that a problem. Joe, that's wonderful. I have been trying to get them to enroll for the past year, but their... Well, their father's been dead set against it. Yeah, well, he's been doing you a favor. Why did that cause you a lot of trouble? No, not too much. I didn't stay in school long enough. Joe, they need an education. And if you could just give them the special attention they need... Now, I'm not going to bend over backwards for the McNabb boys. If they come back to school, they'll get the same treatment the other kids get. And if they start fooling around again, they'll get something the other kids don't get. You surprise me. Why? I just didn't think you would admit the McNabb boys could get the better of you, that's all. No, I didn't say they could. I just said they better not try. But I think you have a lot to learn about being a teacher. Well, you got a lot to learn about the McNabb brothers. bring you your reward. Try, try again. All that other folks can do, why with... Patience. Patience, should not you. Only keep this rule in view. Try, try again. It's very good, Mary.
was very good, Mary. Thank you. So sit down. Uh, I think we've all been working real hard. You young folks, why don't you take a little rest, and the older ones can work on their arithmetic. chilly in here, so could we put some more wood on the fire? Well, it's very nice, Willie. Thank you. funny you're gonna look while you're splitting wood this afternoon. We're gonna need a cord. Lady, you know a lot about playing cards. Well, I find a small knowledge of the science of mathematical probabilities to be great help. Hey, Joe. A little late today, huh? Yeah, and to keep a couple of little boys after school. Are you tired? Yeah. Joe, I hope you're not too tired to read me a story before you go to sleep. <laughs> Fine. I don't pussy cat's my favorite. Yeah, the figures. <laughs> Perhaps you're finding taking care of a bunch of kids, to use your words, is more difficult than you thought, Joe. Was it Willie and Billy that you kept in after school? Oh yeah, it was. It was Willie and Billy. Because I'm not too worried. I figure in two or three days they'll stop coming to school. Well, that seems like a pity, Joe. Well, that's your opinion. Oh, I agreed to teach these kids, but I didn't say anything about raising Willie and Billy McNabb. Well, you know, teaching is only uh, part of a teacher's task. Concern for the boys' future welfare is the rest of it. Oh. oh. For some reason, I thought that was their father's job. They need to look up to someone more than their father, Joe. You could be that someone. Oh, come on, will you, Abby? These kids don't give a darn about going to school. All they want to do is horse around. Well, maybe they're testing you. Maybe they want to make sure that you're worthy of their admiration. Uh, the admiration of Willie and Billy McNabb are the least of my worries. I just hope I can keep them from burning the school down. Yeah, we 
you. Now, we're not going to do any right until the hands warm up. So I'm going to put some problems on the board, and you just shout out the answers. Four. Three. <laughs> All righty. Two plus two. Four plus four. Three plus four. Two plus four. Four plus four. All right. All right. Yeah, Tommy, have a problem? No, but I think you do. Look. Not you, Tim. All right, what'd you do with the stove? Well, Mr. Carr, are you plumb suspicious? When school's over, I'm gonna check that stove, and if I find out somebody's been fooling around with it, that somebody's gonna be in a lot of trouble. We better get out of here, Mr. Carr. It's bad in here. You'll get out of here when I tell you to. Now go on and sit down. Sit down. Something like that doing up a chimney, Mr. McNabb. All right. All right, you want to act like little boys, and that's just how I'm going to treat you. Now, which one of you wants to go first? Now, hold on, Joe. That ain't nothing to get in a sweat over. Just a little low smoke. I said, which one of you wants to go first? Now, Billy didn't have anything to do with that chimney. Why don't you just let him get on out of here? All right, Billy, get on home. I've done my share. I want to stay. Billy, you get. Now look, Joe. You've been having yourself times playing school teacher. That's fine. I'm going right along with you. But a tannin? No. I'll fight you. Fight you like a man and no hard feelings. Nobody gonna pants with me but my pa. All right, that's enough, Willie. Told you that's enough. He didn't give me any choice. I'm just sorry I let him get to me. Well, is he all right? Oh, yeah, he's fine. I didn't hit him hard. His pride's hurt worse than anything. I don't think for sure he won't be back to school. I suppose that's best for both of us. Joe, that is where you're wrong. Look, you've accomplished something that I could never do. I'd like to know what that is. You got them to go to school. Now, regardless of their motives, it's a start. Now, that is the important thing. 
Well, important or not, it's too late. It's over. Joe, it's not over. You must talk to those boys. Abby, look, if I couldn't get through to them before, I certainly am not going to be able to get through to them now. Joe, as a teacher... As a te You keep saying, as a teacher. I am not the teacher, Abby. You are. That's right. I am their teacher, and their future is my responsibility. Now it's your responsibility. Not anymore. Joe, for what it's worth, I think Abby's right. You know, I'd, I'd love to know why you two are getting so upset over the McNabs. Oh, and you're not. I did the best I could. And that's the end of it. Yeah, that's the end of it. You know, I seem to recall you being sent home from school on several occasions. I don't remember the teacher quitting on you. Well, that's right, and you didn't quit on me either. You set me straight, you sent me back to school. Now, why can't their father do the same thing? I don't know. Why don't you ask him? Stand mighty close to home today, ain't you? Saturday, and we just ain't got nothing to do. Wouldn't have nothing to do with them bruises you keep trying to hide, would it? Oh, I seen them last night when you come sneaking in. of some of my boys have done, are you? Well, why? Did they say they'd done something? Well, they, they said they'd been funning you some, and uh, last night, Willie come home looking like he'd been in a fracas. Well, they, they have been fun of me a little bit, but I don't know anything about a fracas. You know anything about a fracas, Willie? Huh? I say you know anything about a fracas? No, I guess not. You boys go find yourself some chores. Me and Joe got some talking to do. Now well, then. Tell me what's on your mind, Joe. Well, first I was wondering when you're going to butcher. We'd kind of like to have some of those ham's ears hanging in the smokehouse. Ain't going to be long now. Cold weather's coming. Me and the boys need some things. Yeah, boys need things. They've been complaining? No, no, nothing like that. Well, they better not complain. You got just about everything a hog farmer needs to have. What about an education? I thought that's why he is here. All right, that's why I'm here. I was hoping you'd tell him to go back to school. No, sir. I just don't see it that way. How do you see it? It's a bunch of foolishness for a hog farmer. Boys are going to take over when I leave off. They got the house, the land, the stock. You, you keep saying hog farmer. I, I just don't see where it makes any difference what a man does for a living. He still needs an education. Yo, I don't want you putting any highfalutin ideas in them boys' heads. I came here hoping you'd put some highfalutin ideas in their heads. I can't read or write, and I get along good. So will they. I guess that's it, then. Be sure to let us know when you got those hands ready. I'll sure do it. So long, boys. Joe have to say. Said he wanted to buy hams. 
Mostly, he just tried to get me to send you boys back to school. He didn't say anything about me. Was there some reason he should have said something about you? I guess not. Go on, tell him. Me and Joe, we locked horns yesterday. And, uh, well, he whooped me pretty good. I figured as much. So I, I couldn't go back there now anyhow. Why not? Because I got my pride. Well, that kind of pride you don't need. I expect you was in the wrong. If you got to eat crow, eat crow. But you don't have to go back to school. I just can't see no sense in taking time off from your chores to learn something you don't need to know. Pa? You, you're dead set against us going to school, huh? I am, but I want to know how you feel about it. You want to go to school? No. No, I, I don't want to go. You want to go to school? No, I, I, I don't want to go either. Hey, settle then. I hear no more about it. Willie? Yeah? How you figure Joe never told Paul about that ruckus you had? How do I know? Seems like that'd be the first thing a teacher would do. Why don't you just hush up? Not like any man I ever know before. I say doing it was easy. Pa says if a man's got to eat crow, he should go ahead and eat it. That the only reason you clean the place up? Look, you didn't tell Pa we had a fight. So I figure I owe you one. Kind of hoped you did it because you want to come back to school. We don't need any schooling, do we, Billy? Willie, I, I've been thinking. You know what Ma used to say. Hey, you just remember what Pa said. Don't need no schooling to be a hog farmer. I don't like to go against your pa, but I think he's wrong. I think you need schooling. I think a hog farmer can be a better hog farmer if he's got an education. Look, Joe, Mr. Cartwright, just done made up our minds. We got a lot of chores to do. Now, come on home. Now, come on. Mr. Cartwright, this here of Ma's Bible. Before she died, she wrote something inside. I sure would appreciate it if you could read it to me. Willie? I guess it don't hurt none. My dear sons, I have so little to leave you, I must count each thing I have with care. I leave you with my love, with the hope it will warm and guide you through all the years to come. I leave you the brave plans I had for you, knowing that somehow you'll make them real. And I leave you this book, the word of God to light your way. Live by it. Live by it 
And remember, my love is with you always. Thank you, Mr. Carrack. I guess it's about time to start school, huh? Mr. Cartwright? Ring the bell for me. Sure, Mr. Cartwright. C-A-T. Good. Dog. Dog. D-O-G. Dog. Try. Try. T. R. I. Why? 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 Remember that. Why? Why? Uh, now. N. O. W. Now. C. All right, that's enough. C's backwards. Just turn it around. Is the cat on the the Willie. <laughs> Very good. Sit down. <laughs> Not too bad, huh? That's yeah, good. That's good. Billy, you're next. Go on. that word. What? What's that word? Now oh, I lost count. Four and two is yep. six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. I thought so. He's just studying a little bit, Pa. I can read. So. I thought we agreed hog farmers didn't need no book learning. Joe Cartwright read us what Ma wrote in our Bible. And we thought she'd like it if we could get some learning. I, I could read it to you if you'd like, Pa. I memorized it by heart. Pa? Pa, Joe says a man is, is only half a man without any learning. Thank 
Thank you. And I'm so glad to be back. And we're all glad you're back. We've got a surprise for you, a little program plan. Everybody sit down. All right, Tommy, you can start. The Gettysburg Address by President Abraham Lincoln. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth to this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot concentrate. Consecrate. Consecrate. We cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here, have consecrated it far beyond our poor power to add or detract. The world will... Good to see you. Why don't you come on in and sit down? I come from my boys. Well, I think you boys would like to stay in school. You two get on home. There's chores to do. No, Will. No, I'm going to fight you on this. These boys need an education. Fight me, huh? Now, there's something I've been waiting to hear. Come on outside. No, wait a minute, Will. That's not what I meant when I said fight you. You told my boys that a man with no learning was only half a man. Well, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'll be waiting for you outside. Children, this uh, will give me an opportunity to find out just how much you've learned since I've been away. I'll show him who's half a man. Your man, Pa. You proved your point. But so is Joe. If you're gonna do any more fighting, you're gonna have to fight me and Billy.
You boys fight me? No. Willie, I don't want you fighting your pa. If schooling for me and Billy is worth Joe fighting for, I guess it's worth me and Billy fighting for, too. Again, you or again anybody. It's over. My Paul and Joe, Mr. Cartwright, are fine. Oh. Would it be okay if I went on with the reading? Please do, Willie. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave their last full measure of devotion. We here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that the government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. No, where's chicken? Why don't we never have mutton? As you know, I come from a long line of chicken thieves. It's beneath my dignity to steal a sheep. Someone is approaching. Oh, Rosalita. Who is this you bring with you? This is Senor Horse Cartwright. This is my uncle Anselmo, my Aunt Dolores. Have to meet you, ma'am. You, sir? He's a customer, perhaps. Oh, well, we are at your service, senor. You wish to have your fortune told? Or maybe a good luck amulet? Or perhaps a love potion, eh? Uncle, senor Cartwright's father owns this land. Besides which, he rescued me from my murderous assault at the hands of Paco. Oh, well, well, how happy I am to meet the brave son of the man who owns this fine land. <laughs> Please tell your father I shall be coming over to see him very soon. Well, I'll tell him as soon as I get back from Virginia City. Eh? What do you want to talk to my pa about? Well, as of now, we need fresh beef. I shall purchase from you a steer at the full market price, of course. Oh, but it'd be all right if you got the money. Well, I, I am a little short, but uh, that is only a temporary embarrassment, and... Uh, but I have something here. 
Ну? Rand are my proudest possession. And because you have been so kind to Rosalito and protected her, I shall let you have them at a very reasonable price. No, I, I, I wouldn't be in the market. Oh, but when word gets out that Randar is for sale, I will be stampeded by buyers. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I was you, I'd sell them the first one to come along. I shall never forget your kindness, senor horse. I shall remember you always. Hasta la vista. Yeah, hasta... Uh, yeah, same to you, ma'am. While I am talking to the owner, you look around, see if you can find anything of value that is portable. Oh, and meet me here in one hour. Hey. Gypsies. What do they want? Something for nothing, I bet. Senor Cartwright? Yes, yes. Yeah, I am Anselmo. By an accident of nightfall, senor, my people and I have camped on your land. I am here to apologize. Oh, well, there's no need to apologize. You're welcome. You'll be leaving soon, I presume. If it were not for a broken tongue on my wagon, we, we would be already gone. Now, how long will it take you to fix the wagon? Who oh, else, senor? That's my son, Joseph. Oh, it's nice to see you. How long will it take you to fix the wagon? Oh, well, since I am here to apologize, I, I do not have time to work on the wagon, huh? Oh, yes. We will need the permission to cut down one small tree to make a new wagon, Tom. All right. One small tree, and then you'll be off in the morning. Oh, but, senor, we are not beggars. We will pay for the tree. Mm -hmm. You, uh, you have the cash. Well, uh, at the moment, no. Well, senor, there are other means of payment. I have a feeling we're going to have our fortunes told. Well, if you wish, senor, but as my guest and free of charge, what I have in mind is a transaction between men of business. Fine. If you will step this way, please. Now, senors, I can assure you his beauty is only matched by his endurance. In that case, I'd be lucky to make it to the barn. Well, you make a joke, senor. I can sell you the horse at a bargain, and in that way I can pay for the, for the tree. Mr. Anselmo, I'm sorry. <laughs> I really can't use him. Oh, that is because you know it will break my heart to part with him. <laughs> Your son, Hoss, he told me you are a true gentleman. Hoss? Hoss? Where'd you meet him? At my camp. When he brought my niece Rosalita back to safety, like the gallant cavalier he is. My brother is a gallant cavalier? He found Rosalita being attacked by a formidable monster. He arrived just in time to save her. Oh, his courage was magnificent. He fought like a tiger. That he... is a lie. He struck me from behind. There was no attack. That's the formidable monster? Be gone, you chicken gizzard. You know, fully angered, he, he seems much bigger. <laughs> wow, look who showed up, our gallant cavalier. Mm -hmm. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, we heard how you saved that fair maiden from that formidable monster. Oh, that must have been a terrible experience for you. He was a giant. Well, we met him today. You, you met them gypsies? When? How? The well, leader came by. He uh, tried to sell us a horse. He tried to sell me that horse. You didn't buy that horse, Paul. Uh, no. No, but he let him stay on a ranch overnight. Eat your supper. has grown bleak, my love. My tortured soul grows weak, my love. Oh, 
grateful fate. Um, am I too late to to own your precious charms? My poem of of love has touched your heart. Ugh! Your poetry is enough to sicken an ox. Our poor Randar is beginning to gray. Hmm. Then we will restore some of his youth. I heard young Paco playing his guitar to you. He's a good musician. You praise Paco, and yet you refuse to let me give my golden voice to the world. Rosalita, how often have I told you your voice is not yet exactly golden? Much voice training is needed. Nonsense. I am ready now. I can see it now. La Scala. The stage of the opera house. I have just finished my last aria. Oh, I am radiant. I am beautiful. The curtain comes down. Never have I heard such applause. Never have I heard such ovations. They love me. Brava. Brava, Rosalito. Oh, brava. Very expensive voice training. Well, maybe just a little bit, but ooh, you give me the money. You promise now. We must be practical, child. If only your uncle were rich, like Senor Cartwright. Ah, that is true. Senor Cartwright, that is a man of considerable wealth. He is gracious and charming, and he is possessed of that rare quality that is so discerning and intelligent. Horse Cartwright? No, no, not horse. The father, Senor Cartwright. Oh, there is a man for you. <laughs> if we are lucky, he might prove susceptible to the pretty charms of a beautiful young gypsy girl. No, I will not do what you suggest. I will not lower my standing as a woman of purity. There are so few of us left in the world. You are right, child. So very, very few of us. You? <laughs> but you who are so pure... Your mind leaps suddenly to unpure thoughts. You think I would ever suggest such a thing? Oh, no, I do not think you would suggest such a thing. I know you would. Now we must go quickly. If we are seen, we will be undone. To do this, you must do it properly. Please, do not overdo it, Rosalita. You are not yet on the stage of the opera house. Now go, quickly. Oh, Senor Cartwright, you must save me. Me not, Mr. Cartwright. Nobody here except me, Hop Singh. Then... Well, then you must save me. They're after me. Who after you, Missy? Gypsies. They may be here any minute. Oh, please, Hop Singh, you must save me. Otherwise, they will kill me. Nobody harm here on pretty head. Hop Singh guard you to the death. Besides, I lock front door. Hupsing, will you open this door and let me in? I thought you gypsy. Steal your horse! They are after me! You must save me! Wicked gypsy after her. Uh, well, why would they have me after her? She, she's a gypsy, too. No, no, I am not gypsy. I am highborn Castilian, but those terrible gypsies, they steal me when I was but a baby. Everybody know gypsy steal baby. They treat me like a slave. Look, the marks of the lash. Oh, Paco's relatives did this to me because I would not marry the miserable little worm. You don't have to marry nobody. Oh, senor, if you say that, then you do not know gypsies. She right, Mr. Horse. Please, please, 
I, I will do anything. I, I will sleep in the barn. I will eat the scraps that you throw me off the table. If, if only you would give me a little kindness and, and allow me to live a little bit longer. <laughs> Ma'am, don't you worry about nothing. We'll, we'll take care of you. <laughs> Evil gypsy not get you anymore. Come, I show you nice room. That Bernie Paul, what does a feller do when a little scared, poor gypsy girl comes to him? As it turns out, she ain't no gypsy at all. And she's been beat half to death, and, and, and she just wants to keep him getting killed. Oh, I suppose. You know, sometimes you can be very clear, but sometimes you can be most confusing, like right now. Now, you say she's a little gypsy girl, but she is not a gypsy girl, and she's our guest here. That's she right. high-born Castilian lady. I'm saying... I would venture to say she's about as Castilian as you are. Hoss, get rid of her. That burn it, boy. I just can't do it. The poor little thing ain't got a friend in the world. She's oh. Anselmo's niece. No, Paul, yes, she... she's Anselmo's niece. Believe me, she is. And it should take me about two minutes to get rid of her. That little girl has been eating nothing but scraps. Well, I didn't want to disappoint Hop Singh after all the trouble he went to. You mean you're not going to boot her out? Well, I, I told her I'd, uh, I'd think it over. She's real convincing, ain't she, Paul? Yeah. She... Anselmo, Dolores, I wish to speak on, on matters of great importance. Am I invisible? Do I not exist? Oh, you. Oh, well, how can you exist if you cannot even steal a small rusty nail from so well-equipped a barn as Senor Cartwright's? Paco seems perturbed. I'm worried about Rosalita. Why? She has not been seen for hours. She must have wandered away and become lost. If you must know, she is the guest at the house of Senor Cartwright. You have allowed Rosalita to be alone with, with three men? I shall not allow it. I shall bring her back, even if I have to drag her by the hair. And if the Cartwrights interfere, there will be bloodshed. And it will be on your hands for having allowed her to go there. You think no, he... No, no, no. That scared little wretch, Paco. He would not leave the camp. Even his shadow is afraid in the dark. <laughs>
sunk even lower than I would have thought possible. Must you peer in my bedroom window like a demented owl? No, no, you are a helpless toy in the lair of beasts. I, valiant to the last, will save you. You must flee with me before it's too late. Be gone, it's simple to... It's all right. Whoever it was is gone. He's just... Oh! Oh! That is Paco's gun. You see, it is as I told you. If he cannot have me for his wife, he would kill me. Oh, it's Paco's. It seems very strange. He would kill the woman he loves. He is a gypsy. He would rather see me dead than married to someone else. Ah. Oh. And uh, how, how do you feel about him? Oh, that does not matter. Besides which, my uncle Anselmo would never let me marry him. He has no money. Oh, I see. That uh, presents a problem, doesn't it? Oh, yes, and... That is why, that is why I am so frightened, and oh, why I thank you for your protection. What? Your strong, gallant sons, they are not here? Oh, my, uh, my strong, gallant sons are in town. They, uh, they'll, they'll be back shortly, though, but you're perfectly safe. <laughs> why don't you go back up to your room? You had a little bit of a fright, and I think maybe a little rest would do you good, huh? <laughs> Gracias. I have never seen such a house like this. It is like a... It is like a palace. <laughs> well, it's far from being a palace, but we find it very comfortable. You are so modest. Tell me, are all wealthy men modest like you are? <laughs> I'm not all that wealthy. <laughs> Say, I, I don't remember when, no. Well, it is true that I will need a few lessons to round up my repertoire, but I also need the gowns and the jewels for when I make my debut at La Scala. You, uh, uh, you, you have ambitions to be an opera singer? Oh, yes. When I make my debut, the whole world will be at my feet. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm sure they have. Uh, you, do you realize that uh, to be an opera singer, one must have years of lessons? Oh, yes, yes, of course, yes. And uh, dresses and a great deal of traveling, and it's very expensive. It costs a great deal of money. You dishearten me, senor. I did not think you were the kind of man who would destroy the cherished dreams of a poor gypsy girl. Oh, Rosalita, I... I wasn't intending to destroy your, your dreams. I, it was just that I was trying to be a little practical, and I was trying to tell you that you'd need someone to help you. Yes. You mean somebody like a... a patron? A patron, yes, of course, a patron who would... Yes! Oh, 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 of course! Why did I not think of it myself? I 
not so stupid. You're not experienced. But you, you, senor, with your generosity and your knowledge, well. you have seen my need, and the world will never forget you. They will remember you always as the one who gave them my golden voice. Now, wait a minute. Oh, Rita, senor, my what? foolish dreams are no longer foolish. Rita, I have you are I... my padron. You will send me to Milano. I will be the most magnificent singer you have ever heard. You will stay here overnight, and tomorrow morning, you will go back to your people. But then Paco's relatives will slip my throat, and my golden voice will be still forever. May the world forgive me. Now, young lady, up to your room. Pronto. Senor Cartwright distrusts you. Si. He sent you home. Si. Now. I think he certainly would not like it if you were to marry one of his sons. Well, I would not like it either. I do not wish to be the wife of a farmer. You little fool, you think you are the first gypsy girl who has been paid not to marry the son of a rich man? I myself have been paid not to. Three times. That's how I earned my dowry. Rosalita, you listen to me and listen good. Rosalita, oh. are you hurt, huh? Oh, no, I, I was falling, and I thought for a minute I was waking up in heaven. Yeah, well, this, uh, this isn't heaven. There you go. Oh. You sure you're all right? <sighs> it's only my dignity that is bruised. I was, uh, I was out for a walk, and I saw you down here, and I thought I would come say hello. Oh, it was very nice of you to drop in. It's the first time we have been alone like this together. But, of course, I noticed you admiring me at breakfast. Oh, you, you saw that. I did my best to cover it up, but I just couldn't. Oh, well, you, you think I am beautiful. You think I am the most beautiful girl in the world, no? No. Yes, yes, I do. Well, it is, it is the terrible burden of beauty. Men, they, they admire me wherever I go, that but... That must drive you crazy. Oh, yes, it is terrible. I do not want you to think that I encourage these other men, but... With you, I, uh, I would not be inclined to break your heart, Joseph. Oh, what makes me so lucky? Oh, you make me feel like no other man I have ever met made me feel. You are so... You are so handsome. You are you are so strong. You are so impetuous. You are flattered, no? Yeah, yes, I'm, I'm flattered. Well, with all these other men, I, I am cold like, like ice, but with you, I, I cannot control myself. I'm beginning to lose control of myself, too. Yeah. Oh, it's like the collision of lightnings. Well, now that we have reached an understanding, do you think your father, he will approve? Mm -hmm. of, of what? Well, of our getting married, of course. Oh, let's not tell him. Not well, we, 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 we have to tell him. In Spain, where I was born, no gentleman, he kisses the lady without the honorable intention to marry her. Yeah, well, you see, I'm, I'm not a Spaniard, and I'm not too sure I'm a gentleman, because I have no intention of marrying you. I don't see why that should hurt our relationship at all. You beat, you have dishonored me. If I had a brother, he would give you an adult. Oh. Oh. <laughs> What are you doing here? What, what are you crying about? What's the matter? Oh, you have been so kind to me. And I had to come and tell you that I am afraid I have broken Joseph's heart. You, you mean little Joe? How? He came to me and he talked of me, of, of love. 
And I had to be so cruel to him. I, I had to push him away because... You see, I love another one. You do, huh? Oh, he is... He is the most wonderful, the kindest, the, the most brave man in the whole world. The most wonderful man I ever meet in my life. When I first meet this man, I think, oh, oh, I could be his forever if he would have me. Rosalita, as pretty as you are, a man would have to be out of his mind not to watch you. Well, I have done everything to, to show this man the evidence of how much I love him. Uh, do you think I dare to hope that he could love me back? I don't see how he could help himself. You really mean that? Sure I do. Oh, host! We should be so happy together! But, Rosalita... Oh, we would be so happy! You don't understand. Oh. Let me explain this. I... I thought you sent that Rosalita packing. What? I thought you sent Rosalita on her way. What do you mean? Well, she's out there right now in the moonlight with my brother Hoss. She's pulling the same deal on him she did on me. She's out there talking him into thinking he wants to marry her. Hoss has got more sense than that. Hasn't he? He's your son. I, I like her, but I sure don't want to marry her. Well, why did you propose to her? Bernard, I didn't propose to her, Paul. That's just it. She she just sort of got the idea I did. I see. What am I going to do? Well, if I were you, Hoss, I'd sort of go to her and sort of tell her that uh, you really don't love her and sort of tell her that you're not going to marry her, sort of. Oh, that sure ain't going to be easy. Did you, ever, did you ever look into them eyes? Yes, I have. Oh, you know what I mean. You told me that Senor Caro, I would pay you much money for me not to marry horse. When will this happen? These things take time. My people have done this hundreds of times and it has never failed. The richer the man, the longer he takes and the more he finally offers. In the meantime, horse is so overcome with the thought of possessing me, he can hardly speak in my presence. It will be a pity to break the heart of so sweet a man. Who cares about broken hearts when money is concerned? <laughs> Rosalita, you better go to bed. We have a lot to do tomorrow. She too will have a broken heart when she learns you do not intend to send her to Italy. My conscience would never permit me to spend money on so, so terrible a voice. Besides, she would be amply consoled by her part of the money. Uh, Anselmo. Anselmo, suppose this fine scheme of yours does not work. Suppose Rosalita marries an outsider. I cannot live without Rosalita. I love her. Then fight Horse Cartwright for her hand. As you very well know, I am a coward. I intend to make a great deal of money from this arrangement. Now, what have you got to offer? Where would I? I get a great deal of money. Where would any gypsy worthy of his salt get money? He would steal it. I said I wanted to talk to you. I said I wanted to talk to you. Did you go over to see her? Did you tell her? Well, not so as you could notice it, Paul. You oh. see, I just couldn't come up with the right words. Oh, maybe these might be the right words. Rosalita, I, uh, I'm sorry, but I cannot marry you because I really don't love you. Paul, it ain't that easy. You do love her? Well, no, but Paul, she's... That poor little thing's just got her heart dead set on marrying me. Oh, come on. She's got her hand set to grab some of Pa's money. I don't believe that. 
I don't believe that. I think you're just jealous because she, she said she wouldn't have you. Well, Horace, that's what you say. Now, here's what I'm saying. I'm going over to that gypsy camp, and I'm going to put Rosalita straight. And it's not going to take too much time to think of the right words. Oh, Paul, wait a minute. It's my job. Let me say it. I'll say it. Uh, but you better get the whole thing figured out. Here she comes. Be firm and be forceful. Here's your chance. Yes, sir. Now. Form and forceful. Howdy, Rosalita. They are so understanding. Yeah. Oh. I, uh, understanding, yeah, that ain't exactly the word I'd have chosen. Look, Rosalita, there's something I gotta talk to you oh, about. Oh, I know, I know. You want to talk to me of love. Well, no, not exactly. You see, I gotta explain something. No, 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 no. I, I cannot come into your arms until I have confessed the terrible burden of guilt I carry. And what's that? My betrothal to you was a plot by my uncle to get money from your father. He hoped that your father would pay me not to marry you. Then it's true. Just like little Joe said, it's all just a trick to get my pa's money, right? No, 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 no. There is not enough money in the world to make me break the heart of a man like you. So, so good, so kind, so gentle. I will marry you. I do not care what anyone says. I will marry you and we will live in the Ponderosa. It will be like heaven. I will cook your food, I will scrub your back, I will have your babies. Oh, I will be such a good wife to you, like a sweet man like you deserves. Oh, Hoss, do not let me go ever, not even for a little minute now that I know what true love is like. <sighs> you have the gall and the temerity to stand there and say you didn't tell her? Paul, you just don't understand. It's quite obvious that one of us doesn't understand. Oh, Paul, it ain't that I ain't gonna tell her, it's just that... I'll tell you what, I'm going to go over there first thing in the morning, and, and I'm going to be just like you said. I'm going to be firm. Dave, oh, you forgot for, forceful. Forceful. The only place that you're going to go is to that cabin with little Joe and help him fix that up. But, now, look, we're going to put an end to this thing once and for all. Once and for all. You lie away before breakfast. You should eat. Or you're not able to enjoy coming happy time. What happy times? Fancy wedding. Much ha-ha and a handshake. By and by patter of little feet in house. Well, there isn't going to be any wedding. That's why I had a ride off without breakfast this morning. Romance is gone from your heart, Mr. Cartwright. It's a very sad. Uh. Oh, hello, senor. These are Rosalita's belongings. Huh? This must be our last goodbye, senor Cartwright. I regret we cannot stay for the wedding, but we must get to Oregon before the rains come and make the roads impassable. Oh, look, it rains uh, a great deal in Oregon. I know it rains a great deal uh, in Oregon. You will uh, kiss the bride look, one look, extra and, time and, for and, me. And, and Selma, I'm trying to tell you something. What? There isn't going to be any wedding, you huh? see? I... Tell me I'm a patient man. Believe me, I'm a very patient man, but this silly business has gone too far. Just too far. Do you understand? Senor, you know there are times when I believe you do not approve of my niece marrying your son. And there are times when I don't think you approve of it either. How do you like that? For one thing, it's against the gypsy law. Oh, please, senor, do not change the subject. I want your niece out of that house. And I want you and your family and your wagons off the Ponderosa today. Me, my wagons, everything. Yes, senor. We do not wish to stay where we are not welcome. Now, look, you, you, you're not leaving here without Rosalita. Is that understood? You're not leaving without Rosalita. Well, senor, you ask the impossible. I am a romantic, like all the gypsies are. I could never bring myself to destroy the love these two have for each other. The love these two have for each other. Now, look, if you're not going to get her out of there, I will get her. Do you understand? I stay here. Don't move. Just stay here. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, it's a very nice having high-born Cassadillian lady in house again. Maybe so we have wedding after all. Please, not to enter. I am dressing. Will you hurry up, Rosalita? I've got to talk to you. 
Later, I am making myself beautiful for horse. Well, Rosalita, I've got to talk to you right now, and it's very important. You wish to talk about the wedding arrangements? No, well, well yes, that's... Uh, look, Rosalita, my, my son, horse, there isn't going to be any wedding. You say this, but Senor Horse does not say it. Goodbye, Uncle. Goodbye, little one. Have much happiness. Have a nice trip to Oregon. Give a big kiss to Dolores. And Selmo! And, and Selmo! And Selmo! Well, I told you, you're not leaving here without Rosalita. Do you understand? Ah, senor, you wish to make an arrangement. No, I'm huh? not making any arrangements now. You know, senor, to destroy a romance is a sad thing. <laughs> and money cannot heal a broken heart. However, it helps sometimes. Now listen to me. There isn't going to be a wedding. <laughs> you are wrong, senor. I, Paco, am going to marry Rosalita. You, you penniless nothing. I am not penniless. I am a man of means. Oh, 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 this means, this money, how you come by it? I tried to tell you this morning, but you wouldn't listen. I stole Randa. I sold him. You stole my horse? Yes, I sold him for $100. Impossible. Ah, Paco, there is hope for you. You are finally becoming a true gypsy. <laughs> I want to uh, speak with you. Yeah, what, uh, what about, Paco? I am a small, miserable coward, house got right. But my love for Rosalita is stronger than fear, and I shall fight you for her. I shall fight with you with, with pistol, with knife. He's immaterial to me. I'm afraid of both. Paco, I don't want to fight you. Nevertheless, I shall fight you. I shall fight you as long as there is air in my lungs. Paco! Paco! Paco, I'm sorry. I, I, I can't let you do it. I can't stand by and, and let you kill my son. Then you, uh, you refuse to sanction a, a fight? Absolutely. In that case, I shall purchase Rosalita from you, senor. From but... him? If anybody purchases Rosalita, they will purchase her from me. Wait a minute. Wait, what do you mean, purchase? You already gave her a hand to uh, Senor Cartwright. Here. I have $100 in gold coins. Name your price, senor. I shall pay uh, anything within reason, of course. Wait, what, what do you mean, a price for a human being? What, what kind you of You stay people... out of this. This is between Paco and your father. She's absolutely right, Hoss. You stay out of this. I'm the head of the family. Yeah, I think I'll stay out of it, Paul. All right, Paco. What do you have to offer? Well, as you can see, she is of no great value. She cannot sew. Her cooking, it leaves much to be desired. She has a vile disposition, but to me she has a certain sentimental value. How much? Fifty dollars. Oh, come on. Fifty dollars. Why, her golden voice alone is worth more than that. Joe, you stay out of this. None of your affair. <laughs> well, senor? Well, Paco, if I didn't have uh, real, genuine respect for gypsy tradition, I wouldn't even be thinking of making a deal with you. But, uh, you know, all of us here in the Ponderosa, we've, well, we've sort of become very fond of Rosalita and... Well, if all you have is a hundred dollars, I guess that'll have to do. A <laughs> hundred dollars for one who cannot cook, cannot sew? Well, take it or leave it. It's robbery! But the sentiment, it overcomes the judgment. Mm. And I thought you were learning. You, you keep out of this. Well, Paco, is it or is it not a deal? I know how he grieves you to lose me, horse, but I cannot help it. It is gypsy law. But somewhere in my heart, there is always a place for you. Well, I'll tell you, Rosalita. 
I ain't gonna soon forget you either. Come on, Rosalita, we cannot waste any more time. We must be on the way to Oregon. And goodbye, Senor Cartwright. It was a pleasure to know you. It's too bad you weren't born a gypsy. You would have made a good one. A good one. Come on. <laughs> I think you're a good wife to you, Paco. I, I think I even give up my operatic career for you. I will cook your food, I will scrub your back, and I will have your babies. Goodbye, Paxi. I'm gonna sort of miss that pretty little thing. Sort of wish I loved her instead of just liking her. I'm just glad to see him leave while we're still on the Ponderosa. I wonder where Paco ever got that hundred dollars. Well, he uh, he explained that to me. <laughs> you know what Paco did? He stole Anselmo's horse and uh, sold for hundred dollars. <laughs> what that fuzzy thing, Rondar? What idiot give him a hundred dollars for that bag of bones? <laughs> I don't know, but whoever he is, I'd like to say thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm what? Except them spuds. Good. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Mm. What's the matter? Hmm? I say, what's the matter? Oh, nothing. I'm just trying to make up my mind whether I want to go to this or whether I want to sell my ticket. I don't know. I really don't think too much of Chanteuse is really. I don't know. You mean uh, you don't want to go see her? Not, not if, not if I could sell my ticket. No, I wouldn't go. Well, I'll, uh, I'll tell you, just to save you the trouble having to sell it somewhere, I'll buy it from you. You want to buy it? Yeah. Keep it in the family, yeah. That stick is worth a lot of money. Of course, I won't charge you that kind of money. We're brothers. Uh, uh, Ten dollars, how's that? Eight. <clears throat> yeah, sold. Besides, it's ought to cut out some of the competition for you. <laughs> well, I, I will admit, he's been a nuisance, little brother. Because you don't know how to handle yourself in a situation like this, and them chartreuses and all. Besides that, you're a little light for the job. <laughs> Uh, you're about eight dollars light for the job. <laughs> uh, 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 good. Come in. Oh. Well, I looked over the Silver Dollar Saloon. Oh, please, uh, Fillmore, you know I don't like the word saloon. Well, never mind how you feel about saloons. Just don't lose the French accent. Oh, well, how was it, huh? About this animal. Oh, he loves you, Fillmore. Yeah, he loves me, but he's a pest. Oh. Yeah. And the silver dollar doesn't seem too bad, and the advance sale seems to indicate a sellout. Heavy on the fence, huh? Well, it's selling big this year, so play it up. I also learned that our newfound friends, the Cartwrights, are pretty important people around here. Oh? Well... As long as I'm going to be around here for a few days, I might as well, uh, enjoy myself, well, Sherry. <laughs> Don't start toying with those two boys, huh? Oh, mon ange, how you worry. <clears throat> I wonder how long a dog lives. What do you mean by that? Well, as your manager and accompanist, it seems to me that I spend an awful lot of time looking for Andre when he's missing. Please, Fillmore, do not talk like that in front of Andre. He's so sensitive. All right, only don't lose the French accent. Oui, monsieur. We will be very French, Andre, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I must say you look pretty good. You, you like it, huh? Yes, sir. Unit up version of Hoss Cartwright. Something special. Yeah, well, like I tell you, this must be something special, Paul. Well, I appreciate you taking me as your guest. Oh, my pleasure, Paul. My pleasure. I just hate to leave without knowing where little Joe is. Paul, don't worry about little Joe. Let's get on in. I don't want to be late for that performance. Mm -hmm. Hey, see, Paul? Here's the ticket. Not only is she beautiful, And she's world famous. That... I see your little brother got top dollar for his ticket, didn't he? Hey. What if that little skin flat of you had to keep these tickets we're gonna go for? You know what I ought to do with you? Just put you in a corral and leave you there. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm leaving, but I didn't, didn't see you standing behind us. <laughs> yeah. Get yourself a new suit, huh? Yeah, I figure it was about time. You had to. Yeah, nice, huh? You, uh, you mind if we sit down? Yeah, I, I don't know if you can read the sign. It says reserved. Of course, that doesn't go for you, Pa. Don't you give me none of that reserved stuff. I could call a bouncer, you know, if I thought it would do any good. I wondered where you'd sneaked off to. <laughs> all right, now that you've seated yourself here, all right. But as soon as Mr. Nice has finished her performance, I hope you will extend me the courtesy of leaving my table then. For what? Isn't it obvious that she and I would like to be alone? Ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I'm proud to present to Virginia City, direct from Europe and New York, the beautiful singing star, Miss Denise. Thank you, something, Paul. Sure, I Sur les ponts d'Avignon, on y danse, on y danse. Sur les ponts d'Avignon. On y danse tout en rond, les boumets se font comme ça, et puis encore comme ça. Sur les ponts d'Avignon, on y danse, on y danse, sur les ponts d'Avignon. What's crazy about it? Hey. Hey. hey, would you mind moving over a little bit? I'd like to see the show. Paui, ask him to please move aside. Et puis encore comme ça. Sur les ponts d'Avignon, on y danse, on y danse. Sur les ponts d'Avignon, on y danse tout en rond. Les militaires font comme ça, et puis encore comme ça. Sur les ponts d'Avignon, on y danse, on y danse. Sur les ponts d'Avignon, on y danse tout en rond. Mr. Nice, I'd like you to meet my father, Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Nice. Mr. Nice? Monsieur Cartwright. I must say, I enjoyed oh, your you go ahead and get it. Oh, it's my pleasure, Monsieur Cartwright. Uh, may I introduce my uh, manager and accompanist, Monsieur Fillmore? Enjoy it. Pleasure, sir. Excuse me, please. I have to go count the money. <laughs> oh, won't you sit down? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, have my seat, Mr. Nice. Oh, yes. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> oh, little Joe. Would you do me a favor? That would be my pleasure, ma'am. Would you go to my um, hotel and see if little Henri is all right? Hmm. And, uh, see if little Henri is all right? Wait. Oh, she, well, you wouldn't like to go see if. Uh... No, you wouldn't. Yeah, well, uh, I'll just be in one. I'll be right back. Oh, merci, little Oh, go away. <laughs> Darling boy. I never thought of him in exactly those terms. Yes, he is, isn't he? Where's that young fellow ordered this champagne? Uh, he stepped out for just a minute. 
coming back? Oh, yes, he'll be back. Just sit down here. I better hold off on this champagne. He already paid me. Excuse me, you say he already paid for it? Look, I'm his older brother, and I'll take good care of the bottle. Just sit it down. No, I... Yeah, sir, please, just get us another glass, will you? Well, if you're his brother, I guess it's all right. Yeah, thank you. I'll just go right ahead and open it up. Oh, no, no, I just love champagne. It's so French. Yes, it huh? is. <laughs> I love it. It's marvelous. It's so lively. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hoss, at least a glass left. <laughs> Your aim was bad. Oh, what are you doing? Yes, me up! you mention it? <laughs> well, I, well, I really would like to explain it. Well, there's no need to that. I think a collection of hard cash to pay for the damage done to the saloon would be a better way of explaining it. Uh, Good night. Uh, <laughs> this, this is a bottle of champagne that I already paid for? <sighs> yeah, that, uh, that's, that's the one, all right. I, uh, Hoss can, can explain what, uh, what happened to it, can't you? Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah, well, go ahead and explain. Well, you already paid for it, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any use in wasting it, so I... I, I, I tell you, you, you shake that French champagne and <laughs> sure doesn't get excited and <laughs> close its stack. <laughs> Joseph. Don't do this to no, yourself, no, no, boy. No, no, Joseph, you... It, what, it, it's, it's, your, it's your new suit. You don't, don't, don't mess it up. Um, I want to tell you something. If I didn't have on this new suit and my new hat, I would give you who oh, the licking that you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> As, as I was uh, saying, Mr. Neese, I'm terribly sorry about what, what happened the other night. Oh, I thought it was exciting. And the way Ben and Hoss handled the situation, it was uh, magnifique. Yeah, well, he's going he's gonna to get a uh, ma magnifique bill for the, uh, for the damages. <laughs> oh. Too bad you miss it. Yeah, I'm sorry, too. I, if I could have been there, I could have really... Oh, excusez-moi. Oh, certainly. Oscar Dreit. <laughs> 
How are you, Mr. Lee? Do come in. Uh, I'll bring you some. Flowers. How sweet. Oh. Is he bothering you? Oh, no. I uh, just wanted to show Mr. Nice that we're all not ruffians and brawlers. <laughs> Down, house, and keep a uh, little of your company while I get a vase for these flowers, huh? Yes. <laughs> you don't sleep much, do you? I think you're a little late with the, uh... Yeah. But I'm a box of bonbons ahead. <laughs> <laughs> See that? Even Andre is caught on your way of operating. You know what they say about animals, they always know. Oh, you're so big, he probably thinks you're a tree. Could I impose on one of you boys to do me a favor and... Ah, ma'am, I'd, I'd be happy to oblige you any way I could. Oh, thank you, us. Little Andre did not have his morning walk. Do you mind? Oh, of course, my brother Oz doesn't mind. Loves animals. By the way, he'd rather walk dogs than eat, wouldn't you, Oz? Nancy Oz, I'll get his leash, up. Huh? Yeah. I'll flip you to see who walks in. What do you mean you'll flip me to see who walks in? You just said it yourself. Animals know. Little well, brother, you're trying me. You're trying me real hard. Not as bad as the people in Virginia City are gonna try you when they see you being pulled around by that funny-looking little dog. <laughs> He stayed out the ranch. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, you going home for supper, ain't you? Well, I sort of figured on it, yeah. Yeah, well, I... <clears throat> that burned his frog in my throat. <laughs> Sounds more like you got a dog in your throat. <laughs> okay. yeah. Well, you tell your part. I found this itch moves with it. I reckon it must be some kind of allergy or something. Oh, that's too bad. But tell him that next time he comes into town to stop in him office and see me, yeah, will you? Yeah, I sure will, Roy. Thank you. I sure will. So long, Roy. Bye. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I don't reckon I was watching where I was going. It wasn't looking what you were doing last night. But I'm purely glad we bumped into each other without your pa around to get in the way. Now, look, that, that was last night. Now, if you were just... Right. And this is today. You had your good time, and now I'm going to have mine. <laughs>
three bonbons are wonderful. Mm. Sure. Did you like one? No, nasty. Mm. Us has been going a long time. No, I wouldn't worry. You know what my pa always says? Pa always says if, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. It has been over one hour. Andre ties so easily. Oh. Look, I don't want you to worry about it. The horse is probably, probably just going around town showing Andre to everybody. Mm. That must be him. Oh, excuse me, Mark. <laughs> yes, here. Yeah. I, uh, Miss Denise, you, uh, you ain't gonna believe this. I, uh, I lost your Andreas. You what? Yeah, I, I, I lost the little doggy. You lost him, yeah, but... my own, my baby. But, uh, my baby, my him. baby lost oh, no, him. No, this, no, no, this, Denise, this, Miss Denise, lady, my little please don't Andre, worry. I'll the find thing. Andre for you. Don't That's worry. That's right, Miss Denise. Don't you worry. I'll find him. Uh, um, may I make a suggestion? Oui. Why, why, why don't we put an ad in the paper and offer a reward for Andre? That is an excellent idea. I was just about to suggest that myself. You just make the reward, I'll pay it. It makes no difference. Just make a reward for like... I, I don't think it fair that we decide how much the reward should be. After all, it is your dog, your oh. love. I think we should leave it up to Mr. Niece what the reward should be. That's a good idea. I was just about to suggest it myself. You just make out the reward for whatever you think is fair, and, and I'll pay it. A reward? Oh, merci, monsieur. Oh, thank you. Oui. The, the, the reward was my idea. Oh, merci. <laughs> Miss Denise, I, I'm paying the reward. Mm. Yeah, Miss Denise. <laughs> Miss Denise. Have a bonbon. Uh, I will uh, go put that out in the paper right away. Oh, <laughs> oh, wait, Monsieur. Oh, and he, he, he's worth so much more to me than he costs. Oh, don't worry about money. My, my brother horse is very generous. Oh, oui, Monsieur. Oh, merci, merci. Mm -hmm. Spare no expense, dear. Oui. <laughs> have a bonbon. What's the matter, Pa? You look kind of tired. I'm just not used to the kind of shenanigans we had last night. And I heard all over. I'll wait till we get the bill from the silver dollar. That's gonna be a big bill, too. A lot of damage. All those tables, chairs, bottles. I'm sure glad you taught me not to get involved in those kind of things. <laughs> you know, Paul, you wasn't the only one involved in that. The rest of them all have to pay their share, too. I think you ought to pay at least half. Where's he going to get the money to pay for at least half? <laughs> well, the same place he's going to get the money to pay the reward. What reward? Reward for what? Well, Paul, see, I, I lost Miss Denise's little dog. And... Little Joel here thought that the least I could do was to run an ad in the paper and offer a reward for him since I lost him. <laughs> a reward for a dog? What kind of reward are you offering? Well, I, I don't, I don't rightly know. See, she was putting the ad in the paper while I was out hunting the dog, and I, I didn't state no exact figure. You let her state an exact figure? Well, yeah, I reckon I did, Paul. You know, Mr. Denise thinks the world of that dog. That's a very unusual dog, very expensive. I wouldn't be surprised if the reward for that dog ran maybe 10, maybe $15. I reckon I can live with that. A pound. You mean neither one of you has seen the ad, neither one? No, paper wasn't printed when we left town. That's too much for me. I'm... Excuse me, I'll go to bed. Yeah. Night, Pa. I think I'll join him. No, no, I, I wouldn't if I were you. How come? I think you better get in town. Start looking before the stampede starts. What stampede? The stampede to get the reward money for that dog that you're gonna have to pay. Yeah. Might as well I don't worry. I could sleep any I wonder. Hey, don't forget, take a lantern. It's hard to find a little dog in the dark.
doggy, doggy, doggy. Come here, Andrew. Here, doggy, 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 doggy. Any luck? You, uh, you looking for that dog so you can collect that fortune, huh? You heard about it, huh? I didn't think anyone knew about it yet, except the printer. That's me. A big, fat thousand dollars riding on that little carcass. I plan to earn it. Here, Andre. 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 Here, Andre. Here, Andre. Here. Come on, Andre. Andre. Here, Andre. Here, here. Here, Andre. Here, here, boy. Come on. Come on, pup. Here yeah. I am. Andre. Well, this town looks awful deserted, don't uh, it? Well, never mind. You take the horses to the livery stable, and I'll meet you there later. Right. I'm going to pay the bill. Eleven assorted bottles. The courthouse burned down two years ago. Wonder you ain't trying to charge me for that. Yeah, Ben. Just finished adding up the bad news. Since it was mainly Cartwright's against Big Man here and his friends, I figure each side ought to pay half. Well, I guess it's reasonable. Them friends you were talking about, I don't even know who they were. Two Cartwrights and only one of me. I figure he ought to pay two-thirds of the damage. Here's our half. Thank you, Ben. You don't stick me with half, Cartwright. You and me are going to sell it right now. Here, Andre. Andre? Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Come on, pup. What's the matter? No luck? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all cans of luck. Hey, where is everybody? There's nobody even in the livery stable. Everybody's gunning their legs without looking for that dead burned dog to collect that thousand dollar reward, thanks to you. A thousand? She put a thousand dollars reward on that little dog? That's right. A thousand dollars. Oh, gee, I'm, I'm sorry. I had no idea at all she was going to put that kind of money on the dog. If you're so sorry, how come you ain't out helping me find him? Well, I, I would help you look, but then if, if but th then if I found the dog, and you'd owe me a thousand dollars, and I I couldn't live with myself knowing you owed me that kind of money. And I don't don't feel bad. You have enough to worry about. I'm going to go console Miss Denise. <laughs> she must need someone desperately about now. Here, yeah, Andre. Fifty-three glasses, seven chairs, three tables. <sighs> this is gonna take quite some time to figure out, Ben. Miss mm. Andre. Get that dog right back to that woman. Yes, sir. Big man's got a chin like an anvil. No, 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 don't cry. Somebody will find Andre. Oh, yes, and nothing's to eat for hours. Poor thing. Poor thing? Is that all you can say? Poor thing? 
Denise, you're just upset, that's all. Ilmo, if you had one little concern about Andre, you would be out there looking for him. Uh, you know, Mr. Nice is right, Fillmore. The, the poor little pup could be starving somewhere. <gasps> of course not. If little Joe is willing to show me around the town, I'll be happy to hunt for Andre. How, how, how would I know what a nice dog like that would be doing in a town like this? Fimo is right. If you care for me at all, little Joe, you would be out. We. Oui. We. Safe and sound. Oh, my naughty little boy. Oh, I will never let you under my sight again. Never. Oh, baby. As for you. That is for being careless. Oh, that poor, poor, beautiful dog. Baby, oh, baby. Oh, look how hungry he looks. Yeah. Let's buy him a steak. Hmm? Andre will love you forever. Oh, and I'm going to love Andre. Oh, give me Come this. on, dear. Excuse me. Pardon me, brute. Baby. Come on, I'll buy you a beer. Well, I need a beer or beefsteak. You know, Jacques, it's hat. That's a hat. I have got to try it on. Do you mind? Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. Hey, Hoss, isn't that the fella who, uh... Yeah. Watch this, kid. I'm gonna get one of those cartwrights by hook or crook. Sit down, Mr. Fillmore. This is gonna be interesting. <laughs> well, look, that, that guy's twice the size of your brother. Yeah, ain't it terrible? <laughs> I see. <laughs> You're a cartwright, aren't you? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, Joe Cartwright. Nice to which you do not have? Nobody knows any better than I do, boy. I know it's lucky. Sure, hope you've learned your lesson. I learned my lesson all right. The only thing is, I, I don't know about little Joe. I don't know whether he learned his lesson or not. Tell him about the fight, Joe. What fight? A uh, fight. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I was talking to Bruno uh, yesterday. He told me he had another fight over there in the Silver Dollar and he broke a whole bunch of bottles and Joe, man, it... that ain't the fight I was talking about. Tell Paul about your fight. Your fight? Tell him about the window, Joe. Tell him about the whole thing. What window? What fight and what window? Well, uh, the window, window over there in the, uh, in the uh, mil millinery shop. There's a window in it. And uh, I was sitting there watching... Miss Denise's little dog. Oh, that dog again. And uh, well, she was inside trying on a hat. You know how women are. They love to try on hats. I know you know about women. <laughs> 
And, uh, well, that big man that you had all the trouble with came up and he punched me right through the window. And uh, when I went through it, it broke. And, uh, I mashed a whole bunch of them little hats and, uh, I busted up this, this kind of dummy in there and the corset got unstrung. And <laughs> you, and you, uh, you don't have any uh, money to pay for any of this damage, do you? I don't uh, have any money to pay for it. Say, I don't have any money. That big man has cost me a fortune, just a fortune. Come yet the far What are you so happy about? Hopsing happy. Very happy. Yes, I can see that. I could use a little happiness right now. What's it all about? Have a hunch what make me happy is to make Mr. Horsa more unhappy. You see, Hopsing going to be rich. Very rich. Hop Singh, how do you figure that whatever will make you very rich will make me unhappy? I don't understand. Hop Singh earn a lot of money. Why don't be so inscrutable? What is it? What? Well, how'd you earn a lot of money? Hey, let go, Jake. <laughs> hey. Andre, hey, I'll take him back to Mr. Nice. Hop Singh, take him back. Cute little donkey make Hop Singh wealthy man. <laughs> Get $1,000 reward from Mr. Hoss. Soon as I take little donkey back to Mrs. Denise. <laughs> I didn't have the heart to tell him there wasn't any reward anymore. You cancel an ad, you cancel the reward. <laughs> Cancel the reward, didn't you? Did you cancel the reward? Well, you just have to pay him the thousand dollars. That's all. I just have to pay him the thousand dollars. Cancel. <laughs> Wait a minute, Paul. Little Joe lost that dog this time, not me. Well, so what yeah. if I lost the dog? I didn't put the ad in the Yeah, but you, Joe, I took the dog back after I took the dog. I never said anything about a thousand dollars. It says thousand dollars. Joe, I took the dog right back. I got no more response. I never said anything. Hold it, hold it, hold it. You're both involved. You're both stuck. You both pay equally. Is that understood? And I don't want to hear another word about it. I've just heard about everything. Just everything. really think Hop Singh would hold us to that reward, do you? I mean, well, the family. One thousand dollar, one thousand dollar, one thousand dollar, what fuck my sword. He would. He would? Yes, and I don't blame him. I'll tell you what I'd do if I were you two. I'd go right into town and put another ad in, canceling that first stupid ad of yours, just in case Miss Denise loses that dog again. And you'll be stuck for another thousand dollars. He's right. Let's get in there. Come on. That'll be two thousand. Dogs, big men, and rewards. You got something there that belongs to me, friend. Oh, but you make big mistake. Little talkie belong to Missy Denise. Yeah, you're right there. But I'm the one that's taking him to her. I let you do that, then you get big reward instead of Hop Singh. Yeah, I know you're with that miserable Cartwright clan, but you sure don't think like them. You got sense. So just hand over that yapping mongrel and we'll part peaceful like. You say I got sense and you right. More sense than to let you get big reward. Now, if you got sense, you let me buy. I can't say I ain't going to enjoy this. I finally found me a Cartwright that I can work over real good. Did 
Did you see that? I sure did. I tell you this, I ain't going I ain't never gonna complain about no burnt chicken no more. Oh. 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 oh, Andre, don't you ever do that again. Hobson thinks small who's a cow is a good place to keep little doggy safe from danger. Oh, how can I thank you? I must reward you. Oh, you return my precious lamb, and you must not refuse. Here, you must take it. Five dollar. Hobson no can understand woman. When money is uh, belong to you, little doggy is uh, only worth five dollar. When money is belong to Mr. Horse and little Joe, little doggy is uh, worth one thousand dollar. Confucius have nothing to say to this gay life woman. No, I understand. Get it. Yes, ma'am, he sure does. Uh-uh. Thank you. Would you hold it? Yes. Oh. Thank you. May we have the roast beef now, please? May we please have the roast beef now for our guest. And please serve from the left. More bread, please. More bread coming up. I heard him, I heard him. More wine, please. More wine. I heard, I heard. That's no way to serve bread. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'm saying. Let's go. Let's go. Mm. 